Thank you for joining Wars of the Rosies as we continue with part 21. Masonry, a healer of strife, from the Mystic Tide by Albert G. Mackey, Book the Third, The Testimony. Masonry, a healer of strife. In his annual address in 1854 to the Grand Lodge of Mississippi, Brother I. W. Spate, the Grand Master of that jurisdiction, made the following remarks on the beneficial tendency of Freemasonry as a healer of party strife. It affords me no measured gratification to advert, on this occasion, to the practical illustration of the happy influence of our institution on the mass of our people at large. The preceding year has been marked by circumstances long to be remembered for the bitterness with which the parties were arrayed in the conflict for predominance, and the personal strifes and contentions incident thereto, which seems, in many instances, to threaten seriously the social relations of neighborhoods and of families, the silent but powerful influence of Freemasonry in curbing and temporizingly the perturbed passions was then seen and felt. I am glad of my own personal knowledge to testify that in several instances during that excitement our lodges did nobly their reasonable service of healing dissensions among neighbors and friends by pouring into the breach the oil and wine of peace and fraternal love such is the benign province of Freemasonry, and this, too, is more clearly demonstrated under our peculiar form of civil government. In a country like ours, where there is allowed the greatest amount of personal liberty, not inconsistent with the rights of others, where there is freedom of thought and of opinion, the passions and prejudices of men have a more ample sway, and the designs of the evil and ambitious can only be averted by rising high the standards of moral rectitude and affecting a general morale, as well as a general intellectual culture among the masses. Am I assuming too much when I claim for our institution the exercise of a powerful agency and affecting this great and important work among our people? Is not and may not its moral influence be seen and felt, not only in the varied relations of human life, but by the body of the community at large, shall I be charged with an undeserved eulogium upon our venerable order, when I allege that it is peculiarly adapted to the genius of our institutions and exists as an energetic, but unobtrusive agent, continually aiding in the maintenance and development of the great principles of civil and religious liberty and equality. Freemasonry, in the ministration of her offices, acts not by ostentatious or coercive means, but silently and unobtrusive she operates under the finer sensibilities of our nature, and dispenses her blessings as the dawn of heaven and as the dew that descends upon the mountain of Zion in the clangor of party war warfare, and the acrimony of political strife, Freemasonry as a great balance will of moral force, serves to ameliorate and circumscribe the embittered feelings of men. Her principles, too, are not the mere creation of conventional decrees, or the result of human ingenuity alone, but being founded in nature and being consistent with the attributes of nature's God. They are permanent and eternal. Political combinations, parties, powers, circumstances, and events arise and exercise an evanescent influence for will or for woe. But the undying nature of our institute demonstrates that the preponderance of moral power is upon the side of probity and that the same cause of right and justice can alone slumber for a while. The beautiful flower that blossoms in spring may be destroyed by a wanton hand or blasted by the frost of winter, but the germ of its existence, the vital essence of its being, remains in the earth with all its inherent properties and needs but the genial rays of a summer sun to renew its growth and redevelop its beauty. So our institution may have its periods of obscurity, its hours of suffering, and its days of triumph. The demagogue and the bigot may, through selfishness and ignorance, asperse and introduce it, and, through evil influences, dim for a while the luster of its moral beauty and usefulness. But truth is as powerful as it is durable. The clouds of cankered calumny may, 
for a wall, overshadow our temple, but the season of trial will be short and the returning sun of prosperity will show her beautiful proportions standing forth, unsullied. In their original symmetry and brilliancy, our institution is rock built and firm as the hills themselves. As the promised bow spanning in the heavens, it will ever an aeon stand and to bear faithful record that 6,000 years have not impaired its purity or lessened its influence, but that it still lives to disrobe human passion of its perversity, to extend the hand of charity and relief to the needy and distressed, to wipe away the terror of the widow and the orphan, and to assist the glorious principle that God hath made mankind one mighty brotherhood, himself their master and their lodge the world. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.